You get that food, buddy? Time to get that breakfast? I love how he lays down to eat. He was, hey, what's up, garden friends? Yeah, for your tropical plant party, how's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Did everybody have a good Valentine's Day? Mine was nice. These were sent to me, and this is what happens when tropical flowers get shipped during an Arctic blast. Should have just thrown them out, probably, but I thought, well, I'll give them a trim and see what happens, knowing that they weren't going to recover very well. The red ginger that's back here isn't looking as bad. No, it's actually, that's looking pretty terrible. The ginger's not looking too good, but it does have these cute little pineapples. Aren't they adorable? And the loofah balls, aren't these neat? I'm definitely going to save those. I'm not throwing those out, and I'll probably cut the tops off those little pineapples and grow them out just because, I mean, come on now, look at. So tiny and adorable, even when it's out of focus and you can't see it. But everything else that's in here, dead. That's okay. It's the thought that counts. It was a lovely thought. Negative temperatures, so this is... What happens there? I should probably go ahead and pull all the bad stuff out of there, which is <laughs> really the, most of it, but I'm definitely, like I said, I gotta keep the loofah balls and those little pineapples. It's just too cute. Finally warming up outside. By warming up, I mean it's like 50 degrees. Somewhere in there, the snow's melting, kind of, a little bit. It's a vast improvement from what was going on last week. It was very pretty, but not quite what I like for being able to go outside and play with the plants. So I figure, do a bunch of stuff outside this week. Oh, it's so nice to see the ground again. It's like 50 something degrees somewhere around there and there's still still plenty of snow on the ground. But there's a lot to get melted, so that's not too surprising. I was going to say it's time to take the covers off the sable pumps. It looks like the wind already did that for me. For this one, it looks like the stakes held on nice and tight for that one right there. Drop that right there for now. They look good. I think we spent enough time talking about these last week. The main thing I just wanted to make sure that those weren't going to cook. So it's getting pretty warm. I also need to take these sensors and these weren't meant to be outside. So don't want to leave those out here unprotected. And I can turn those lights off too. I don't need those anymore. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but the birds are chirping up a storm. It's just a beautiful day. It's supposed to be like this, I think, all week. I mean, mostly today and tomorrow. It's going to be in the 50s. Uh, maybe might hit 60 tomorrow. We'll see. I'd be kind of surprised if it did, but I will take this. This is lovely. Go ahead and get these all flattened down, put them away. Oh, the needle palms. I still need to uncover those, don't I? I may go ahead and leave the frost cloths just for a few more days. That ground's got to be pretty frozen. That should help warm things up in the ground, right? Maybe, probably. I would think so. Over here, this was a uh, sable palm that I didn't even talk about, but it is... Uh, and I was worried it wouldn't survive. I have this, like, all kinds of things just piled around it. Anything I could think of that would help hold in some heat. I'm very surprised. That's looking pretty good. That's a sable palmetto. Not at all hardy here. Not one bit, but actually, I think it might look a little bit better than the sable miners. Yeah, that's not really shocking. What I'm really interested to see is how the sable, not sable, the needle palms, how these are looking. Because with the sable miners, I was able to see what was going on underneath their covers. These are, wow, frozen solid. Basically just ice cubes. But with these, I just had to hope and trust that the sensors were being accurate and that they were staying warm. Or warmer than it was outside. Oh, look at that. That looks so much better than they did when I covered them up. That's a huge relief. Hopefully it will be the same with this one over here. You know, when I covered them up, the foliage was much darker. Didn't look as good as it should. They, uh we're suffering some from the cold, but it's, they've bounced back. I can see there's some damage in here. I should grab the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. See, there's some foliage in here that's a little bit dried up. That happens sometimes. These didn't get sprayed with any type of anti-transpirant this year. I didn't think I was going to need it because I've had these in the ground for so incredibly long that they're pretty tough. Uh, eh. I can see there's a spear down here that doesn't look too hot, but it's still in there firm. So I think that'll be okay. Should at least be better with that cover off of there. Cause these are probably getting pretty warm, I would think, when the sun was hitting them. Unplug those lights. Definitely don't need those now. Well, I'm relieved with how these look because I've had them for such a long time. They're really slow growers. I even could replace them. It would cost an absolute fortune. Needle palms are very expensive when they get bigger. These two I've had for... Gosh, I don't even know. At least 10 years, maybe 12 years. 
something along those lines a really long time. It's late February, so I don't think I'm going to need these covers anymore, but I'll keep them around just to be safe. You never know what's going to happen in March or April. Oh, I have never had to cover my needle plums in March or April. Maybe I should just put them away. We'll get to that in a minute. Come over here and let the magnolia free. This thing's been covered up for like, what, two weeks? Could probably use a good water. I'm gonna say they all probably could. Yeah, that rosemary's toast. <laughs> I wasn't so sure how it was going to do regardless because I had forgotten to take it and it had already experienced some negative temperatures. I threw it under here just to see. Oh, look at that. Still some green. Well, that's great. Even has some ice on the pot, but still has some green on it. Oh, that smells so good. My hands smell amazing right now. Bonsai down here looking good. It's a giant chunk of ice on the bottom of it, so it's kind of wonky. I started this one from an Encore Azalea, and this one was only hardy to zone 6B, so I wasn't sure what was going to happen. The temperatures being that cold and in such a shallow container. But some frost cloth can make a huge difference. Teddy bear magnolia also looking just fine. Another huge relief. This is a zone 7. So wasn't sure what was going to happen with that one. The Bracken's brown I wasn't as concerned about. They're pretty sturdy and it looks totally fine. That's gonna be fun to stand back up. Yeah, oh, that actually wasn't so bad. I <laughs> really should come in here and cut the alyssum out of this container. Just realized I had my exposure turned up from when I was filming in the house for it to turn that down. The first like eight to 10 minutes of this video might be a little bit bright, sorry about that. I figure I'll leave this in here just for a little while because what I had been doing was I had this pulled back and it fell forward just to help insulate some of the things that the dormant perennials that are down below. Container's looking pretty good though. There's a um, Dolce Silver Gumdrop Pucara and here's some Sweet Flag and the background part in the Barking Dog. More of that Dolce Silver Gumdrop and another Azalea. They all look fine. This is bone dry, <laughs> needs watering, but it's also frozen solid. Yeah, that's the thing. These pots sometimes, when they freeze, you actually have to wait several days to really see where the damage is. It's gonna be the same thing with those palms. You have to keep an eye on them for a while. Uh, what I would like to do is go ahead and bring all those plants out of the garage, the ones that I moved in a few weeks ago, but to make sure the gate's not frozen anymore. Yeah, what I was going to say is I have to make sure that there's enough space out here. Yesterday I moved a couple of the palms out, but there was still like a good, probably six inches of snow that needed to melt. And it was in the 50s, upper 40s, lower 50s. It takes that much snow a long time to melt. I think there's enough room here to get things out. I might just wait until tomorrow when I know for sure the snow will be gone, but either way, I'm just happy. Happy to be outside and not be freezing. That nice fresh air, isn't that nice, Toby? You're being annoying, stop barking. Forgot to take these outside with my clippers and some anti-transpirant. Hello, Colby. How you doing, bud? She's enjoying her afternoon cookie party. You so cute, pumpkin. And so are you, Colby, a very handsome tortoise. The longer this pandemic goes on, the more I talk to my pets. This here, anti-transpirant, which is made out of pine oil. I'm going to put a very light coating here on these needle palms. The point of this is to keep moisture from blowing out of that foliage. What's going on right now is that the water is locked up down there in the soil because the soil's frozen. That can be one of the concerns with having those covers on these plants for too long is that it gets really warm and toasty around the plant, but the ground's frozen. Moisture's locked up down there, so they can end up drying out. I'm just using a little and trying my best to stay upwind from it because whatever this stuff sticks to, it sticks to, and if it gets on my lens, I'm gonna be in big trouble. But that's normally the issues I have with the needle palms in the winter time is them desiccating and drying out. It's not usually cold damage. Try my best to get the tops and the bottoms of the leaves. Should be all that it needs. It should be plenty warm, I would think, the rest of the year. I wouldn't be concerned about these unless it goes down to below 10. Even then, as long as it's brief, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Here's something I'm surprised by. I thought this Akuba would be a total goner. I really thought this was going to die. The pot that it's in is broken and it was somewhat frozen to the ground and I just didn't want to risk shattering it and then having the plant unpotted. It's not fully broken, it's just like has some minor cracks in it, but it was enough that I just didn't really feel safe with messing with it, but look at it. Out here, unprotected, negative degrees for several days and looks fine. The Mr. Gold Strikes are typically pretty hardy. That's the variety of this Akuba Japonica's Mr. Gold Strike. I've lost them in negative temperatures on multiple times, so I'm pretty surprised by this. Must be a little warm, toasty spot over here. But judging from the snow on the ground, I'd say it's actually probably not. Maybe you just got lucky. I don't know. I'm gonna do this Magnolia. Oh, that's really close to my lens. I'm gonna forget to get the Azalea. 
Yo, you can't even see that. And the magnolias, just because, like I said, the soil's frozen, so they can't take up any water. So this will help hold that moisture in. And then I should probably clean up this rosemary too, shouldn't I? Oh, I am actually tempted to leave some of this dead stuff on here, only because that's going to provide some protection to what's still alive and what's still green on the plant. If I make sure to have that angled towards the wind, that's going to provide a barrier up against that rosemary, and that way I don't need to spray the anti-transpirant on there. Yeah, I'll just leave it for now. I really wasn't even expecting this to make it through this winter. I meant to bring it inside and just totally forgot because this I don't think is a hardy variety. Uh, I mean, I guess clearly it is somewhat hardy because it still has some green on it, but yeah. I don't know, time will tell that green stuff could brown out here in just a few days. Might just be a delayed reaction. Stems on it are still tender and flexible on the green part, so I actually think that that's probably okay. Where I live, rosemary is kind of hit or miss outdoors. Usually you have to have a pretty mild winter, and I didn't, this has seen some extreme cold before it got thrown under that frost cloth. It's been fine, it's gone down to zero degrees. No problem, it had snow and ice on it. It's been doing okay. Just be patient, leave it alone. I was just really in the mood to use my snippers and do some more yard work out here. Uh, I do still have all the uh, Kubas, the other ones in the garage. I can load those up and bring them out here. They'd probably enjoy getting some sun. It's been a few weeks. They're pretty thirsty. Every, these poor plants, they've been in here for like the last two or three weeks. Almost three weeks, actually. <laughs> Probably more like two and a half weeks. I don't have lights over here. So they've been sitting in the dark and they're very dry because it's been so cold in here. I didn't want to water. I, they've had a small splash, but that's it. Nothing extreme, just a little drink to help get them by. See the foliage is getting kind of light on there. They're alive, they survived. That's what matters. <laughs> the Akubas, they look completely fine. No surprise there. Pretty solid, sturdy plants. There's load one, got the Thatsia in here. Looks totally fine. The rest are just Akubas and then a uh, Laurel. It's a cute variety. I wasn't sure what the hardiness was on this one and that's why I took it and I had two. I left one out and brought the other one in so I could see how they would differ. The label says minus 10 on this one. It's the Etna English Laurel. I just like them because they have larger leaves on them. It's nice to have some more broadleaf evergreens around the winter time. Not one I see very often, so that's why, like I said, I brought one in, left the other one out just to see what would happen. Go ahead and take these around, get them sprayed down and maybe watered? I don't know. I might hold off on that until tomorrow. There we go. Everything's moved back out. I gave him a spray, did that off camera. The wind's blowing in like every direction possible. I think I already mentioned, don't want to get that anti-transpirant on the lens. It's not going to come off. But everything looks okay. I tucked them back to where they'll just get morning sun and afternoon shade. But I think that this should be an okay spot for them, at least for the next few days while I wait for the rest of the snow to melt off out here. There aren't a ton of options as to where to put everything because there's still a good amount of snow on the ground. Should be gone, I would think, by tomorrow. It's up to 55 right now. They just said tomorrow should get into the 60s, maybe low 60s. I would imagine that that would take care of the rest of all this. It's going to probably be pretty muddy and gross out here. That's okay, I'll take it. I'm just happy to be out here. See those leaves? Oh, they're thirsty. I probably should have watered them and then sprayed them. I just, I got excited and I was really feeling it and just started going to town. Pretty breezy out here. I would think if I waited like 20 to 30 minutes, maybe an hour at the most, these should be dry enough to go ahead and come out here with the watering can and give all these plants a nice heavy drink. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Also, something out here smells like death. Don't know what it is. It smells like dead animal. I hope that that's not what it is, but that's very much what it smells like. Hey Tobes, look at you looking so handsome. You're drooling, that's not so cute. Going on like six o'clock and look at it's still, there's still so much light out, I love it. Well, it's like 5.30, so is that going on six o'clock? I don't know. There's surprisingly still a good amount of stuff left out here that needs to melt off, but things are getting good. Probably just gonna be a sloppy wet week out here. That's okay. Go ahead and give everything out here a good drink with everything that's not frozen, like the azalea and the uh, rosemary and the magnolia. There isn't much reason to water those because the pots are frozen, so it's just be pouring water on top of the ice. That doesn't make much sense. All right, I mean, I'm assuming this is probably still frozen. Yeah, yeah, it still feels pretty frozen. Go ahead and pop this off of there to make it a little bit easier to get down inside of these pots to give them their water. Oh, and it speeds things up so much. Takes a lot longer to water when that nozzle's on there. Comes out so much more slow and delicately. I'm sure the plants love that, but I do not, at least not when I'm doing everything with one hand. That's not as easy. <sighs> oh, okay, feels good to have that done. Just being outside feels great. Okay, it's three days later. 
I have spent so much time watering. I got it. I think it's time to go ahead and get the water turned on. The only problem is it's a little bit tricky to get to, but I think I can do it. There's a briar horse here. Can anybody else collect those? Also notice this insulation down here, which should be up there in the ceiling. You know, several days ago when it was below freezing outside, there was a really loud pop in the kitchen and the things shook a little bit. It sounded the way it used to sound when my dog used to be flying across the floor and run to the cabinets. I bet that that's what this was. I bet that the ground was probably frozen up in there and the sump pump couldn't get the water out. I hope. I don't see any rodent damage, so I assume that that's what that's for. Anyways, I'm gonna turn the water on. It's a little bit early, but you know what? I don't care. Oh, we go. I can barely, barely reach that. Pipes aren't frozen. That's a good sign. I think the hose spigot's probably open, so I should rush up there and shut that off now. Oh, Easter decorations. I mean, it's probably a little bit early for that, but why not? May as well bring it up since I'm down here. Yep, that's good. Water's flowing just fine. Right next to an outlet, too. Why on earth did they put an outlet directly next to a water source? Doesn't that seem stupid? Bulk of the snow melted. It's been very breezy the last few days and very pleasant in the 50s and 60s, which is amazing for this time of year. I mean, you know, 60 degrees, 65 degrees, that's 70 degrees warmer than it was this time last week. Last few days, I've been spending close to an hour and a half to two hours moving watering cans in and out of the house to keep things watered. It's not just this. There's more in the driveway and then, well, everything, essentially. Been watering the palms and the laurels, like doing it all by hand, loading up the gorilla cart with watering cans and just, I'm not into it anymore. It's a great workout. It's nice exercise, but um, I don't think that it's necessary at this point to not just use the hose, right? I have all of this over here too, and I've been pulling some more things out. Some of the yuccas are out here, oleander. And they're, I mean, look at, look at how dry this is. And I just watered this. This got a full three gallon watering can on it. It's just bone dry and thirsty. So hose seems like a good idea at this point. I was tempted to maybe start to move these, start to. <laughs> Talking's really hard today. I don't know what my problem is. It's having one of those days. I was thinking that it might be time to start moving some of the more temperate, cold tolerant plants just to go ahead and put them in the backyard all the way back there. But it's still February, so I'm trying to not get ahead of myself. I want to keep them near the garage door in case we have a cold snap and I need to push him back inside just to be safe. I would be surprised if that were to happen because generally in March, which we're almost there, it's not likely to drop below 20. But it can happen, that happens sometimes. Everything I've pulled out so far is good to 20 degrees, no problem. <sighs> there we go. That is so much better. I don't have it hooked up to a hose nozzle yet, but still, this is gonna save a lot of time. I don't usually turn the water back on this early in the year. From everything I was reading though, it basically like all the plumber websites said, as long as it's not gonna be below 20 for more than a few hours, that it's probably okay. And then of course, to make sure to leave the valves open and shut it off at the house until you're totally away from having freezing temperatures, which I, like I said, I don't think we're that far away from that. We always get some random cold that blows in sometimes through like late March into mid-May, you never know when. But it's never more than a few days. And this is also why I don't usually like to have too many potted plants outside for the winter just because it's so hard to keep them watered. But normally that's not an issue this time of year. Normally we have enough precipitation to take care of things, but it doesn't look like we're gonna have much rain for a while. It's looking at the farmer's almanac, the long range, the extended forecast, and they were saying we're probably gonna have a cold snap with some snow maybe early to mid-March. And that precipitation probably gonna be about an inch below normal. So that's when I saw the thing about the precipitation being a little bit lower than it's supposed to be. That's when I decided, you know what? Just go down there and turn the water on. Like, why are you torturing yourself? There's no need for that. Faster to go up and down those stairs to turn that water on and off multiple times than to keep filling up the water jugs from the sink, carrying them outside, putting them in the gorilla cart and doing that over and over and over again. We'll say though that cold water is making that hose really uh, um, uh, not flexible. Figured I should find a different word than stiff given what we're talking about. Anyways, I think I'm going to have to break out the flex hose. You know, those ones that just are like made out of fabric or whatever it is. Might work better for all this. What do you think, Tobes? You liking the sun? Yeah, it's nice out, isn't it, Toby? So nice and sunny. Good morning, pumpkin. It's the next day. Oh, don't get too close to that. That's not for pumpkins. Yeah, the saying, the curiosity with the cat. Got some springtails in the mail to put into the terrariums and 
Well, it was upside down in the package with all the water that's in here. You can kind of see if I can find the right light. There's a layer of water in here. It's a pretty heavy layer of water, too. That's actually probably about right, but this was all upside down, and I'm not seeing any kind of action in here. So I took the lid off to let this breathe for a while and maybe warm up a little bit. Eh, I don't know. Hopefully this culture is not a dud. I have several of the terrariums in here, the apothecary jars that need some kind of cleanup critters in them. And I love springtails, they're very effective. These are also holding on to too much water right now, so I gotta get these lids off. I mentioned, oops, <laughs> I mentioned in last week's vlog that I had given these all a pretty good drink because, you know, they had dried out an awful lot while I was waiting to do the one year update on them. But I would say that they have more than enough moisture inside, but they shouldn't have all that condensation in them in the middle of the day. Well, it's not quite middle of the day. It's like one o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, I know I just said good morning to Pumpkin. That's because she's a cat. She was just sleeping. That's what they do. They do lots of sleeping. Right, so my point was that I need to get these lids off and let some of the water out of these because to get these springtail cultures and there's a good amount of water that normally ends up going in there with them. So I think that's pretty much the only thing I can do here, right? You don't want too much water in these, and clearly they're already at their maximum capacity, so I don't know, the springtails may have to wait a couple days. Got some new spices in the mail too. Does anybody else get excited about new fresh spices? I This is Italian sausage seasoning. I thought I had just ordered Italian seasoning. It's fine, it's gonna be similar just with a little bit more kick. They sent a packet of, a, not even a sample packet, this is a hefty amount of jerk seasoning. I don't eat meat. There's still plenty of good things that can be done with that, some taco seasoning. I always feel silly buying taco seasoning, but the taco seasoning from Penzi's is so good that I never mind, and they sent some stickers here. So who doesn't love free stickers? These are not going to show on camera, they're Black Lives Matter stickers. Now this became a mail time, but it did. What I've actually been working on over here is just some stuff with the house plants getting the leaves cleaned off, doing some watering, not some watering, a lot of watering with everything that's over here and those windowsill and all my orchids. They all got pretty dry with that cold spell, just like this stuff in the grow space when it was too cool out there to really do much watering. It was kind of the same thing with the house plants. Anything that was within like a couple feet of the windows, it was still pretty chilly. I've been giving them all decent sized drinks. This begonia down here, is that gonna show? Can I find it? Anybody gonna be able to see it? I know if not really. It's a begonia whimsy, has some flower buds coming out on it. That's fun. Grow those more for the foliage, but the flowers are pretty too. Another one of my orchids opened, one of my phalaenopsis. Isn't that a pretty one? I'm trying to reach around here, see if I can find the tag. It's phalaenopsis lulin purple violet. A really pretty one, the flowers are very, very deep red, kind of like a red rose, but with a little hint of purple in there. The lip has all of those classic Phalaenopsis speckles and dots. I was worried that this was gonna fully blast. I mean, just because of the extreme temperature shift and it did, there's a little bud down there that looks like it's gonna go, well, it's definitely, that one's done, look. That's done, not supposed to fall off like that. So I managed to get some flowers off of those spikes. Lots of orchids in spike right now, lots of my little fowls. Got lots of fun flowers getting ready to pop open on them. I just realized I don't think I really explained the dilemma here very well, did I? The springtails, if you don't see them running around on top of the carbon or charcoal, whatever the media is that's being used to culture them, then it, you need to pour out that water into the terrarium and the ones that are floating will go with that water. So to avoid these being overwatered from having to pour those from the water into there, I need to let them dry for a few days. That's that's what I should have just said from the beginning. Just have to give this some time, hope for the best. I'll put a few grains of rice in there, maybe some nutritional yeast that will keep them fed if there even are any. I'm sure there's some in here. There have to be, I don't know. The, like I said, they were in the package upside down and the package was small, so it's not like it got flipped around during shipping. That's how it was boxed up. And the heat pack was right up against it. And these are temperate, so they can go tropical. I don't know. Any other time I've had to order springtails in the past that usually, like when they show up, you can see something in there, but it's not so unusual to have to let them sit for a while. It's happened before as well, so I'm going to put this lid back on here. Now it's been open for a while, but I'm not gonna screw it down. I'm just gonna let that sit on there very lightly and hope for the best. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll just wait a while, come back in a few hours and see if there's any action in there. What are you doing? You being cute? You being cute? I turned on the camera, so it's time to stop, right? Enough, Pumpkin, where are you? Okay, bye, Pumpkin. Well, 
It has been a few hours. I went ahead, as you can see, puts them into a wider container, just really so I can see them better. Springtails prefer a dark, moist environment, so what was probably happening is they're probably all just focused, like, in the center of that jar. Once I moved them into this, I started seeing a little bit more action. I doubt I'll be able to get it on camera, but they're just tiny little white things. The white things that, like, that right there. Right there, that's rice. That's just, so they have something to eat. And I looked it up. The cultures from Josh's Frogs, at least what it says on the listing where I bought them from, says that the cultures are only started one to two weeks before shipping. So that would explain why there's not a ton going on in here, which is fine. That's actually good to know. I just kind of wanted to know what was going on. So I may hold on to this culture for a little bit longer, keep it fed, keep clean, filtered water in the bottom, make sure it stays nice and moist and wait probably three weeks, something like that, until there's a little bit more action going on in here. Because as this is, it's gonna be pretty difficult to disperse such a small amount of them out equally amongst, even though they're small terrariums, I'll have to have like giant piles of charcoal in them, in the terrariums in order to get them in there. And I don't, I don't want that. I could just pull it out later, I suppose, but Seems like a pain in the butt. With this culture being the way it is, I think it would be hard to get them spread out evenly. I'm gonna turn my flashlight on here and maybe get a better look in there. Uh, I doubt be able to see anything going on in there, especially since I'm not using a macro lens. It's okay, just gonna give it some more time. Let them grow, let them reproduce. When I've done springtails before, I have fed them with yeast, rice, fish food. There's all kinds of things people do to keep these cultures going. It's not very complicated. It's a pretty simple thing to do. I'm sure Serpa Design, like the terrarium king on YouTube, he probably has videos on it. If he does, I'll link them down below if you want a more in-depth conversation about springtails. I'm just using them. I want to make sure it's not on there too tight. It's using them to help break down the decaying matter that's inside of these various terrariums back here, and that will, in turn, help keep them clean and fertilize the plants. So, you know, fertilizing terrariums can be a little bit tricky. You don't want to use a liquid or anything synthetic, anything with salt, because that'll build up and there's really no way to flush that out. I've in the past used earthworm castings or even just toss an earthworm in there. That works really well, but over time, that can actually be a little bit too much. I've always found it's just easier to go that natural route and have some critters in there, a cleanup crew. They'll take care of things, get things nice and clean, and in turn, get the plants fertilized and help keep them lush and looking nice. I feel like I need to put a label on this. Somebody's gonna pick this up and not realize that that lid's not on there all the way and something bad's gonna happen. Well, I almost got you, pumpkin. I almost got you on camera. Get your pumpkin off the camera, pumpkin. The dry erase tape. I'm pretty sure I could just use a dry erase marker on that container, couldn't I? Yes, no. My autofocus has been terrible today. I say today as if cameras have moods, but sometimes doesn't it seem like technology does have moods? Yes, no, anyone, is it just me? For no rhyme or reason, it won't be working one day, and then the next it's totally fine, you didn't do anything. Let's see, I just put dry erase marker on there and we'll just wipe right off, yep. Well, I'm still gonna use a dry erase tape, I wanna use it. I am still going to go ahead and leave these jars open just for the night so that they can have like a full, I don't know, 18 hours to breathe, something like that. There's a lot of moisture in those, so I don't think it'll hurt. The ones that are still closed are the ones with the moss balls in them. I think they're okay. They're, I can see there's not much water inside of those, but these, that's too much. Past five minutes, I'm like, why is it so dark over here? I think maybe that might be why right there. That's a slight improvement. So I think that's gonna do it for this week. A whole bunch more I would like to get going on, but I just need to wait and watch that forecast for one more week, just to be safe. It was so nice to be outside, the snow melted, and even just standing around with the watering cans and hooking up the hose and using the hose, it just, there's something about it. It breathed new life into me. Sorry, flowers. Breathed, 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 no, breathed, it rejuvenated. There we go. That's what I was going for. Man, my favorite orchid. It's just a fowl, but it has been in bloom since whatever video I got this in, which I think was late December, and it's still going strong. And it even it has some new spikage starting to, you're not gonna be able to see that. Maybe, kind of. Can we get in there? Yeah, a little bit of a nub starting to shoot up out of there. So it's starting to go again with more flowers. Don't know the cultivar, no idea. I know there's one called Sweet Memory or Distant Memory that looks kind of similar to this one and it's like reputed for having really nice long lasting flowers. So maybe that's what this is, I'm not sure. Tobes, y'all done? Y'all done? So you clean that face up, Toby. Just give it a minute, I swear something's gonna happen. Well, I thought she was gonna jump up and do the super cute thing where she jumps up. Is she over there? I swear she's at Pumpkin. Hi Pumpkin, what you doing? Just having a seat, 
relaxing, waiting for dinner, maybe, probably. Or in the background beeping, if that even comes from the audio, that's my, my washing machine, my washer. It's got something wrong with it. If you put like one too many things in there, then you have to reset it every five minutes while you're washing clothes. I don't know, I'm fine with it, it's whatever. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. Hopefully things are warming up for others around there. That cold blast hit like the majority of the country, not just here. And we didn't even have it bad, not at all compared to a lot of places. Hopefully next week, we'll be able to get outside some more. Not that it wasn't out there enough. I know this is out too early. I'm gonna put it away. I just brought it up so that I would know where it is, but I'm gonna put it somewhere else. That's going to be even nicer. Some of the nurseries are opening back up. Might go check them out. I don't know, we'll see. But I'd like to get all the plants that are in the driveway moved around back if the weather's looking like it's gonna hold up and set up like a nice area to just sit and have all the plants together. Something that'll be nice. Just a good place to hang out and relax. And it'll be a lot easier to water if everything's all together. That would help too. Right now there's things scattered all over the place. You done, food coma? I feel you, Toby. You said you're a good boy. Love you so much, Toby. All right, so everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Why are you submitting? What did you do? And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.